Here comes the late night load of gravel for the gravel pit. Excuse me, for the new barn from the gravel pit. There we're talking. Listen to that pipe spark. Welcome back to the way we farm. So we farm here in Western New York. It's actually getting chilly. It's only 6.30 on a Friday night. I have to put a flannel on, but I'll take it. Next week's gonna be back up to 80. So two weeks ago, excuse me, three. I was in Rantoul. Then the next week we had our son bitch show. The next week we had our son Troy's wedding here last weekend. So now this week was back to work. So we got the old Peter belts. And we went hauling gravel this week. Me and a couple buddies. Troy's out picking pumpkins right now with Mandy, his new bride. So we're hauling in gravel for a spot that's going to be a grain, uh, excuse me, a storage bin. So it's been a busy couple weeks. After I got back from Rantoul, we decided it's time we got to get this. Sorry about the sun. Our friend brought his uh, deer skid loader on tracks. That's been handy. Oh, he's also got a little pan behind the 4320. Wait a minute, we gotta check this out. We were scraping topsoil, making a drainage ditch the other day out behind a new storage barn. Look at this old pan hooked to the 4320. It works surprisingly well. It is amazing how efficient that was. Troy got to play with the old D6 dozer this week. So we're leveling gravel. I don't know, we're gonna try to put up a 60 by 120 Hopefully we'll have it up by the 1st of December is the plan. So we have our own gravel pit. You'll see that in a minute. We're, we hauled in a bunch of gravel. We're trying to get it high and dry. We put a drainage ditch. You can't see it out behind there. There's a drainage ditch between the barn and the Christmas trees. Bought a cat generator this winter because we don't have three-phase power. It cost us a million dollars to get three-phase power here. I know there's grants and stuff available. We're going to look into it, see what we can do. But in the meantime, this was the stopgap measure. So put in, put the generator in, ran underground lines, couple, uh, I think they're four inch. Ooh, the old Dodge with the Gen 1 Cummins in it. Hi, old girl. So we had to put a panel box on the back of this, our little dryer shack. So there runs the wires that come in. Well, the size of them, they weren't cheap. So we got four wires running in there, actually five. So we're gonna, we run, then we ran the line, a uh, couple two inch um, PVC sleeves over here to where the dryer is. So we still got, the electricians are coming this week. We're gonna set a shed up to put the control boxes in, but this dryer has two burners on it. So it's gonna take a lot of propane. It's gonna take a lot of electricity. So hence the dryer, excuse me, the generator. So the old stirator bin is gonna become our wet bin. It's got a three phase motor, big motor on there. We've got a brand new electric auger that's gonna go from there to the top of the dryer with a 40 horse electric motor. I'm not sure how big the fan motor is. These two burners have each have a 15 horse motor. So we're gonna put them bad boys, they'll be run off the generator. The unload over here is single phase. So if we if it's cold out, we could just fire up a electric auger to load the trucks out here in the driveway. Oh yeah, we had to expand the driveway out here, make it way longer, way bigger, deeper. Dug out some topsoil here, put in some gravel here. Propane tanks are gonna get set there next week, so we gotta get that leveled off. We gotta get some gravel in there. So plenty to do yet, but I am super excited. Our corn is green. Most guys around here haven't started chopping corn yet. It's been just a cooler spring, summer. We had some heat here a couple weeks ago, but it's still been below average. So the corn is still green. It's gonna be probably November 1st before we get going, and it'll still probably be in the uh, mid 20s. So this new dryer is gonna make us be able to get our corn dried fast, Hopefully, I keep joking, I want to start on Monday and finish on Saturday. 
we don't farm that many acres, but we've got probably 250 acres of corn to do, and it'd be great to burn it through pretty quick. We might have to dry some soybeans, so if it works out, we'll put the soybeans in the stirrator bin, run them through the dryer, if the dryer's running by the time we start soybeans in a couple weeks. So, real quick cover crop update. It's been really dry here, but the wheat's growing, the clover, the radishes, and the buckwheat seem to be doing good. So with this hill, it's hard to tell, but this is a hill here. It sure is nice to have a uh, cover crop growing on it. Troy planted his pumpkins in the cover crop wheat. They did really well. The pumpkins are clean. The cover crop wheat, we let it head out when we planted them on Memorial Day. And uh, oh, never mind my little weed patch here. Um, but the wheat, just the pumpkins laid on the wheat and they are clean. There's no mud on the pumpkins. So the pumpkin vines are starting to, starting to kick the bucket. But if you roll these pumpkins over, here's the wheat, their cover crop wheat. So, uh-oh, I don't know if a deer or insects got into that one. Deer love pumpkins. They love to take one bite out of them, but they've got a bumper crop of pumpkins. They're out there picking right now. They got some cool, look at the difference between the orange and these stackable red ones. They got all kinds of varieties, but they're doing well. Still got a few tractors lined up from last weekend from the wedding. So I got to get them moved and there's just not enough hours in the day. So watch the rest of the video. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate you guys watching. And until next time, it's going to be a great day to feed the world. Detroit is back in topsoil where we stripped the spot for the barn and the driveway for the new dryer bed. That old D6 working. We've got a seat belt that's carrying protection on it. Don't worry, he's a great professional. Always worry about him rolling off the pile. So I'm hauling gravel from our gravel pit. We got the gravel pit 13 miles away. So we're running a loader. We got our friend Dusty here with his crawler skid loader. And as we dump him, he's leveling them. We'll try to big, build a big old barn if we can afford it. We can't afford it, but we can't afford not to either. A couple years ago, we were loading the gravel with our 4440, and it didn't really want to dump over these tall trailers, so we built a bit of a ramp here. It works pretty good. So today, my friend Joel's running the old white peat. I'm running the black peat, and uh, yeah, we'll see how many loads we can get hauled today. So over here at our gravel pit, we got a pile here of overburden. And years ago, people abused this pit and didn't do a good job of managing it. But this is decent gravel. So this is the stuff we're hauling in for our new barn that we're gonna try to build. We're gonna try to build a storage barn this fall. So it's got a lot of sand in it, but it's also got decent stone in it. Um, it packs really good. We've hauled it in before a couple years ago, but that is cool. Look at all the different layers of rocks. That is just so cool. So my friend Joel is gonna make me a pile. So and hauling our own stuff when we need to. So it cost us a small fortune if we had to haul in enough gravel for the barn we're building. But it's still costing us something, but the loader rent was reasonable and the gravel's quote unquote free, a little bit of fuel, a little bit of time. And we're uh, gonna be excited to have a new barn. Stuck in the nose. 